Hey everybody, welcome back to another carving tutorial. Today we're making the bed. Alright, so this is unlike your carving, it's not going to have a whole lot of steps. It's pretty straightforward. The size of log you're going to want is about three feet tall. And if you can make a, a circle with your hands around it, it's going to be big enough. You can't try to find a bigger piece. Before we get started, if you can't find a big enough piece, uh, let's say this is your log. If you actually, for me, both sides are flush on my log, but if you were to cut your log a little bit more of an angle, you'll uh, understand what I mean later. When we cut the seat in, it'll give you that much more space, so that's a tip and a trick right off the bat. So just you know, keep that in mind if you don't have a big enough log. All right, so not to make things too confusing right off the hop, but eventually what's gonna happen after our seat is cut and our back is cut, we split the log right down the middle. So before we even cut the seat in, you need to figure out and orient your log in the way you want it to be when it's gonna be finished sounds confusing doesn't it so <clears throat> for me I picked the longest point of the log and that's where I'll cut down the middle it just gives me more material to deal with and it just so happens that I have two gnarly looking knots coming out on this side and I'm gonna orient my log so each side of the bench actually gets one of these knots so it'll end up looking you know that much cooler so this is gonna be my middle where I'm gonna split it down so I'm gonna put my seat in on this side now for you or whatever you have for material, you can see in the back I've got two slabs that are two inches thick. Uh, standard seat height is usually around 18 inches. So I'm gonna mark 16 on my bench, or maybe 15, we'll go with 15. And I'm gonna do that in a couple areas, all the way around, all the way around, about a foot in. I'm gonna go grab my saw and I'm gonna cut that into about a foot. Now this isn't an exact science, um, it's log work, so don't, uh, don't try to be too perfect. And only guesstimate about a foot. Scratch that, you're not gonna wanna go into a foot. So you're gonna mark, I'm gonna mark 15 because my log's a little bit shorter than three feet. Now when I say you're cutting in at about a foot, don't like, if your log is short, don't cut it so you only got an inch on the back end for the backrest. Uh, kind of leave a lot of meat on there. And I'm going to do the uh, the back cut in one go also. I'll move the camera angle when I do it. But what you're going to want to do is, you're going to have your seat, and then you want your back to have a slight angle on it. The key here is where you start up here, you end four inches down below on your seat. I'm going to cut it all out and I'll show you what I mean. It might be a little bit easier if you have something to see. Okay, so I made a little boo-boo. I accidentally cut it an inch too short. Well, like it says, it's not rocket science, it's a bench, so it's not the end of the world. So my seat height is 14. When I put the slab on it, it'll be 16, because it's two inches thick. Now, what I said about doing the back is, let's just spin it around. Can you, can you see that? Let's do that. There's a slight angle coming in from the back down. Uh, optimal is a four inch uh, lean apparently and actually from the seat you want to slope that inwards down an inch I just do it flat because I don't sit on them other people do haven't got any complaints so far All right so your next step is actually gonna be uh, uh, just kind of narrowing these down so they kind of go up to a point just to take some material off and what I'm gonna do on the back side of this one is actually make a curve make a curve on the back side of this one uh, just to give that that much more character and then we're gonna uh, shorten the knots all the way around and then split it right down the middle okay now a tip for splitting it down the middle because you need to sand up the inside of these things uh, once it's split is uh, just do it in one cut and what I mean in one cut is I mean I don't mean you know do it on a different angle do it on a different angle keep your saw always in contact while it's going down don't lift it up so you don't get those lines all the way uh, along pretty sure you know what I mean
Alright, so that's, that's pretty much all the hard work that you have to do on this one. Next, we're just going to be sanding and finishing everything up. So I'm just going to get set up so I can do that. Alright, so for smoothing down the inner sides of your bench, there's two methods you can choose. I prefer using a round bottom planer, but for you who don't have the $600 round bottom planer, uh, you can use a saw. And that technique is just brushing it grain wise to get rid of all the bumps. Bring the saw in for a close up and I'll show you what I mean. Pretty. So to finish this thing off, you're going to want to use a, a, a polisher. I have no idea. I got mine from Katie Tire for a hundred bucks. Now it's a Simone's brand. And just be aware that I this is the second one I bought. I found they have connection issues with the trigger. The trigger will just die, right? You can hotwire it so that you just plug it in and it goes on, but I don't recommend that because it's not safe. But uh, for a hundred bucks, it definitely gets its money out of it. I'm using a clean pad, uh, 120, should uh, make it nice and smooth. So polish it up. All right, so the other way to smooth these guys out is using a round bottom planer. When it comes to doing the outside, I like using the round bottom planer because it takes the material off. Like usually it's the logs I work with are wet this time of year and uh, sanding them can be a little bit tricky. So I just use a round bottom planer on the places that I can reach and in the places I can't, I'll either use a power gouge or uh, an aggressive grit sanding disc which takes off the wet, uh, the wet layer of wood and gets me down to a relatively prior type of wood and then I can use the, uh, the sanding, uh, the buffer to really sand them up. So, I'm going to use planer, power gouge, buff. So the last portion of this bench, uh, this side, is uh, sanding off this bad boy. All right, now I just use, uh, I think it's 24 grit on the grinder, and I and I leave it sort of rough because the seats do go here, so you don't really see it. Let's do that real quick. All right, so the cool thing about working at a uh, at a log home is building place. They've got some pretty scooping tools here. This is uh, Makita, the 12 inch portable planer. It's got some beef to it. So we're gonna use this. <laughs> if you don't have one of these, you could just use the, the, uh, the polisher with the sanding pad on there just to kind of flatten out your surface. So these are, So this is the live edge slab. I'm just gonna uh, plane it really quick just to get all the wet off. And if these aren't, usually when they're not wet, I just use the polisher to make them all nice and smooth. But I'm gonna use the 12 inch planer to take them off. And then we'll go to, into uh, how you can transfer an image on the back of this. And then just kind of do a relief carving in a sense. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay. So for the most part, I've got my slab secure here. Um, when you're putting an image down, depending on what you're wanting, uh, you got to find the center line along your your slab, and then you want to find your direct middle, depending if you're centering it. So finding your direct middle ain't too hard. You just use quick maths, and then boom, you got a middle, right? Now, to find the center line along this bad boy, I'm gonna bring you guys in closer. It's kind of confusing. What you wanna do is you take your tape, find the center of this here, which is 15 and a half, which is seven and three quarters. So make a little mark there. Then you come over to the other side, and you find the half of whatever this is. And this is 13, so that's six and a half. Right, and then you connect those two lines for the most part, and you've got your center. Okay, so now I've got my center line down, I'm going to grab the image. So what you want to do is you want to find the center. Okay, so grab your tape and just kind of give a, a little hoof gnaw there. From snout snout it's 18, so 9. So I'm just going to make a little mark on this piece of paper. Now I know that when all these images are together, this is the direct center. So I'm actually going to measure that again. Say it's about an inch, and we'll put an inch line. should be able to see the line through on the other side. You can barely see it, but I made a mark there. So I will make a center line on my drawing. So now I've got a T here. I've got the middle of my image right here. Now when you're doing this, you need a laser printer, number one, and the image is always inverted or reversed. So important you find the middle of your bear also. Eight and a half. It's four and a quarter. Let's do that on both. Four and a quarter, four and a quarter. Wait a minute. It's about five. We'll say it's five. All right, it's not rocket science. So then we're going to make line across on this bad boy so we know where that is so this T that we drove on here wrote on here will line up with the T we got on here and that'll cause our image to be transferred exactly where we want it which will be center gotta get really animated with the hands because my face ain't in the picture all right you don't want to get some lacquer thinner that's backwards? Do you guys see that backwards? I don't even know. It's lacquer thinner. Okay. Now a little bit of a rag. And some sort of flimsy plastic. Just so happens. Got an EB Games edge card here. So this is going to happen quick, so watch carefully. I suggest you pre-soak your rag, but you don't want to soak it too much. There's a fine balance, and I haven't really figured out what that is, but I just kind of go with it. So you get your image lined up on your lines, okay, and then we're going to take this here swath of gnarly crap, we're going to rub it on the paper, all right. Yeah, till it's kind of wet, then you take your card and you rub that bad boy, all right? You rub it real good. Just, you know, get it on there. And if you've done it right, your image should be transferred. And then it's just a matter of lining up your other images.
which can sometimes be tricky. Sometimes be easy. And remember, rubbing is loving. So we got the bear all uh, carved out. Pretty sure I didn't record the uh, video for it. My camera's dying, but uh, I'm just gonna quickly do a couple of bear paws on either side, and we're gonna oh hiccups. Sorry, we're gonna spray it with black spray paint, and then we're gonna sand it smooth, and it'll leave the black on the inside uh, on the parts we've dug out, and uh, everything else will look real pristine. Right, so personally I like to leave a little bit of space on the back end here. We go ahead and bolt those together. I can't tell. So these are the structural screws that I'll be using. They're, uh, I buy them at Home Depot. Apparently Home Depot carries them now. Uh, they take a hex bit, but they're really good when it comes to not splitting the wood and actually holding things together strong. We're going to put two on each side. For the back, I use these smaller screws that have a smaller head because they don't leave that much of a mark when you put them in. And for the most part, when it comes to leveling the back, I just kind of eyeball it, you know. You can pull out a tape, find the centers, and make it perfect if you like, but it's art, right? And there you have it, guys. A perfect little bench. Now, for me, these things are real hot sellers uh, because they're functional, right? Uh, any carving that's functional usually sells a lot better than just a, a statue or so, but teach your own. All right, we'll see you in the trailer to finish this puppy up. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I just want to say I'm really sorry about all the chainsawing that was going on in the background through the whole video. I tried to time it around it, but there was just no getting away from it. As far as next week goes, I'm not too sure what I got planned for you. I'm thinking of doing like a full-sized bear or either uh, a carving that involves like kind of squishing a bunch of different types of animals into like one pole uh, I know I sometimes struggle with it but I, they're, they're really popular when you have like a, like say a six foot chunk of wood with like four or five different animals in it or it could just be heads right so I'm kind of leaning towards doing that next week we'll uh, we'll see I'll probably let you know midweek anyway Thanks for watching guys, and as always, keep on carving.